Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby and today we are going to be going over a rock breakable tutorial on Blender. Today is going to be really exciting because we are starting up my new series called Tutorial Hell where we go over the basics on Unity, Blender, Unreal, and Substance Painter, ZBrush, all those things, all those good things that we need to know in order to get into a game studio. So let's get started. So I just opened up Blender and we have our default cube. We're actually going to select that and make it an active object, press X and delete. Now I'm going to shift A, open up my quick ads and I'm going to add a UV sphere. Once we have our UV sphere in place, I'm going to go up to edit, preferences, and we have our blender preference modal that pops up right before us. I'm going to select add-ons and I'm going to go into this search bar up here and search within add-ons for self-fracture. My self-fracture is already turned on, but yours may be defaulted off. So go ahead and select that little checkbox and turn it on. Once self-fracture is turned on, we're going to close out the modal and we are going to start working with our sphere. Now that our sphere is selected as active, we're going to press F3 and this is when we have our uh, modal that pops up and we're going to type in cell fracture. Now that we typed in cell fracture, we have our modal for our cell fracture preferences. This is when we're gonna make all of our tweaks to the cuts and breaks of our breakable rock. We're gonna have it at our own particles and we're gonna set the source limit to 300 and I'm going to set the noise to 0 0.50. The noise is just going to make the rock look more organic or not. If you have a low noise down to zero, it's going to look a little more stylized and more geometrical to where if you have the, the noise set to a higher number, it's going to look a little more organic and fractured. We're going to keep the scale at one to one. That's always worked well for me. And we're going to set the recursion to two. So recursion just means that every break in the rock that we have, we're gonna break it two more times within. And the source limit is directly correlated to recursion. I like to keep my source limit at eight. And if I'm not mistaken, source limit is based off of percentage, not actual number. So for every two, it's not gonna be broken down eight times. For every two, 8% 8 of it will maybe be broken down. Clamp recursion just means this is the limit of breaks that your rock will be able to have. So you'll have 250 breaks max. So we're not gonna raise that up super high. We're gonna keep it at 250. If you take this to let's say 500,000 clamp recursion, then your computer is gonna be processing a lot of vertices and you're most likely just gonna crash Blender, crash your computer and have to sit there for 20, 30 minutes to reboot everything. So keep this at a pretty modest number. Right here in the ratio, I just like to keep this as small, but you can also randomize the breaks. Um, but these are all like little settings that you wanna play with later down the road. And then everything here, I've never really had a reason to go in and mess with any of the mesh data. So I just keep those as default and I press okay. Now we have all of our rocks being calculated in, as you can see, and it's gonna take a little bit of a minute to do so. And once we do that, we're gonna move forward. So now we have our rocks broken in. They look fantastic. And we're gonna go up to here into the scene collection and we're gonna select the original sphere that we started from. You can either right click and delete or you can just press X. Now that we have everything, I'm gonna press A. I'm gonna select and I'm just gonna move this up a little bit. And I'm gonna go into this chain looking tab that's in the middle of our scene and we're going to select individual origins and we're going to scale. So individual origins just means that each piece is going to scale individually rather than a group or work off of each other. So this is a nice scale right here. Now that we have all of these selected, I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna select one rock now we have selected the active piece. That's very important. Don't forget to select an active. 
Now that that's there, we're going to go into our physics properties tab and we're going to select rigid body. When under rigid body, I'm going to keep it active. And for our settings in our mass, we have it set at one kilogram. Let's make that two kilograms. So this mass just means that when you're playing the animation, it's just going to show the weight of the rock. And I'm just going to raise mine up a little bit more. And then when I get the animation in a scene that I like, I'll press pause and hopefully the weight will kind of have reflected within that. And for collisions, we're going to keep it at convex hull. Uh, there are a couple other people that like to do different types, but I'll leave them uh, listed down below so you can have more reference there. For friction, I'm going to bump my friction up to 0.6. And for bounciness, I'm going to do 0.001. I don't want a lot of bounciness. I'm sorry, 0.01. I don't want a lot of bounciness, but I want there to be a little bit of organic movement when it falls. So we're going to keep it at our settings there. And for our sensitivity, we are going to turn on collision margin. And we're going to set our collision, collision margin to 0.01. There we go. Fantastic. Now we have our settings to our likings. We're going to go up to the object tab right here. We're going to select and we're going to go down to rigid body. And then we're going to say copy from active. So what this does is this is going to copy our rigid body settings that we have applied to our active object onto the rest of our selected objects in the scene. Perfect. So now we have our rigid body settings selected all throughout our sphere. I'm going to move the sphere upward a little bit and now I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to create a plane. Now I'm going to scale this plane up. Oops, messed it up a little bit. That should be good. Now with this plane selected, I'm going to go and I'm also going to apply a rigid body physic on top and I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to select collision margin and in the type I'm going to select it as passive. So I'm going to select it as passive so it doesn't move, right? And now that we have all this, it should work. Let's see. Put it in render mode so we have it looking nice. Look at that. Really nice. And now we have a really great pile of rocks that we can work with in any of our scenes. So if we wanted maybe the rocks to be not so spread out, I'd probably go in here, select everything. I would position it down to where it doesn't have so much of a fall. And now we even have a more congealed pile of rocks. So you can go ahead and mess with that, mess with the duration of the fall. You can mess with the weight and inside of your cell fracture settings and kind of tweak it to your liking. There's the tutorial. I hope you learned a lot from it. I hope it was pretty quick and concise. If you have any notes for me or anything you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments below. I'm going to be watching for those and getting my tutorial hell series up and going. I hope you really like this rock breaking tutorial for all of your environment art journeys and I hope you make something beautiful with it. Thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you later. Bye guys.